new version of the kernel. So if you get a new kernel package from the Red Hat network or from a YUM repository, use IVH instead of UVH, which we've yet to look at. Because the installation option, indicated by I, ensures that the package is not overwritten, meaning an existing version of the package is not overwritten. So if we had, let's say, version 2.6.13 of the kernel and we receive 2.6.14, 2.6.13 will not be removed. So installing a program is very easy, especially when there are no unresolved dependencies. We see the hash marks for preparation and installation. And once it's been installed, it's available for querying locally using RPM query. In this case, the package's name is DHCP. And it returns information. It tells you when it was installed, which is today's date, and the fact that it's available. If you want to see the files within the package, RPM query list DHCP will do the trick. It includes all of the packages in, or all of the files that is in that package, and is indeed another query option that you'll use quite often. So let's just list it as a seventh query option. RPM query list package name returns all included files, which also includes any directories that are created by the package. So keep that in mind. So again, installation will not overwrite a previous version of the package. It simply makes the program available, and you're free to use it. Let's find something else to install. Let's determine whether or not GFTP, which is a graphical FTP program, is installed using RPM query all, grep case insensitive GFTP. It's currently not installed, so the exit status is non-zero. Let's navigate to the browser and get a URL for it. We'll control F to search for GFTP. Here's the package, version 2.0.18. We'll copy link location, and then on the remote system, execute RPM, IVH, and the full path. This will install GFTP. It doesn't need any additional packages. So now, a which GFTP tells us that it's installed. An RPM query file user bin GFTP tells us that GFTP belongs to GFTP. So it's installed. So IDH is a really simple usage of the RPM program. There's yet another mode that we have not explored, and that's the upgrade option. This overwrites an existing version. So upgrade installs or overwrites existing package. So use this if you want to install fresh or overwrite an existing version. The usage is just like what we showed you for installation. Instead of I, however, you specify U. So RPM UVH for both cases. And it will overwrite or install fresh anew the package that you have an int of interest. So for example, if we wanted to install GFTP on our local system, we'll take the URL we just posted, and that's the entire path, that is. We'll copy it. And locally, we'll execute it, but changing I to UVH. GFTP is currently not installed on the local system. And this is upper U, so let's go ahead. And now it installs it. Let's just note that as well, locally, that it's upper U and not lower U. That was a slight oversight. It's actually uppercase U. So this will either upgrade the package or install it anew. Now locally, RPM query all, grep GFTP reveals that it's installed. And in RPM, once this comes back, query info GFTP will reveal that it was installed today in the installation date field. So UVH is what you use when you want to overwrite or install a new. There's yet another option. That's the ability to freshen a package. This simply updates an existing package. However, the freshen option will not install the package if it does not exist. So note, will not install the package if it does not exist locally. Meaning it has to be installed for it to work. And it uses the uppercase F option. So RPM FVH 
start at RPM freshens the current version of a package to whatever version you've specified. So you'd have to search for something local. Let's see, for example, if we RPM queryless grep or RPM query info grep, this will tell us the version of grep that's installed and when it was built. November 27, 2006. Chances are 54.2 will not have changed with 5.1. And we can just double check that. And it's still 54.2. So it hasn't changed. So it doesn't make sense to attempt to install what's already there. Freshen wouldn't work in this particular instance. We'd have to have a new version of the package. But just bear in mind that Freshen, although we didn't specify it as one of the main five options, is a way to install or upgrade a package in the event that the package currently exists on the system. Now how about package removal? That's very straightforward as well. RPM-E with optional VH for, for the verbosity and hash marks followed by star RPM removes a package. However, the removal process takes into account dependencies. So if it sees that by removing the package you'll break other packages, it will complain. So let's just note, removal process considers dependencies and will complain if the removal will break one or more packages. To get around this, use the no depths option or no dependencies option with RPM EVH. So RPM EVH no depths followed by the RPM, the name of the package, will remove it without regards for dependencies. So with that said, let's remove GFTP using RPM EVH GFTP to dump GFTP. Now there are no other packages that depend upon GFTP, so we should have no trouble removing it from the local system. And here it throws an error because we attempted to use the hash mark with the removal, which is fine. So we'll just dump it. Let's take it from our documentation. And this version of RPM supports the hash marks only with installation, which includes upgrades as well. Now let's confirm that RPM performed the way we expected it to using RPM query all grep gftp and we should see nothing returned indicating that the package doesn't exist. It's been removed. Let's remove it from the remote system as well. RPM EV gftp as well as DHCP. And if the package isn't installed, it tells you it returns an error and it's gone. So removal is pretty straightforward, but again, if there are dependencies, RPM will complain. And in order to force a removal, you'll need to use the dash dash no depths option. So thus far, we've covered installation, querying, verification, upgrading, removal. We haven't freshened the package because we currently don't have a newer version of a package. Perhaps later on if we find a version of a program which supersedes an existing version, then we can freshen the package. But it's pretty straightforward. Just use uppercase F with the lowercase VH option for verbosity and hash marks, and an existing package will be freshened. Use UVH to upgrade or install a new, and use IVH to install a new version without overriding an existing version, such as when you're installing a new version of the kernel. Now, there are other ways to integrate package installation into your Red Hat environment, such as using YUM, as well as using the graphical environment. The graphical environment is available from the add remove section, add remove software in the environment. You may also access it using system config packages. So let's just note package management GUI. 
one, use add remove software, which really is a pointer to system config packages. So again, applications, add remove software, or from the shell, and it's a self-explanatory, straightforward GUI, execute system config packages, which brings up the same GUI. We'll see it momentarily. Straightforward interface. It did report in the background that the system is not registered with RHN, which means newer versions of packages will not be downloaded, but that can be fixed with yum, providing we set up an internal package repository. So here are all of the packages that are available. You may filter the list to installed packages, and the items that have checks next to them are installed. You may also look at available packages, packages that you may install. Since there is no formal package repository defined, we won't see a list. By default, the system config packages utility will check the Red Hat network. However, you need to be registered with the Red Hat network to take advantage of it. And since we are not, we cannot use it. So this list here represents everything that's currently installed on the system. You can search for packages. And if you have a repository defined, items will be returned. And you may also browse if you have a repository defined. Again, the GUI interface is pretty limited, as we have often found with many of Red Hat's GUI interfaces. They're generally very limited, unlike SUSE's GUI interfaces. However, it still provides some sort of window into your programs. We suggest you typically use RPM, the shell-based tools, to support installation, removal, and management of packages, as the GUIs tend to be anemic with Red Hat, and they tend to change quite often from version to version. So that's a little bit about the GUI interface. What we want to look at next is YUM, a way that we can actually configure a repository that our internal systems can use to query. If you notice, when we launch the packages interface, it says it's not registered with RHN and the support will be disabled, which is why we're unable to browse and search for new packages. No repositories were set up. However, when YUM's in place, that changes the presentation in the GUI.